Welcome back to The Explainer tonight. Now, following the unfortunate demise of the very first CDF in office, we now want to understand the military a little better and understand that position and indeed where it goes. Uh, I will be with my guest in just a moment, but I want to just show you what uh, this looks like in terms of rising to the very top, which is a four-star general. It starts at second lieutenant position, and then you've got, this is in order of seniority of rank, and then you move to lieutenant. Uh, sorry, it starts this other way, captain, lieutenant, second lieutenant, and then you would go to brigadier, a colonel, lieutenant colonel, a major, major general, lieutenant general, and you can see the stars begin at Major General. Two stars for a Major General, three stars for a Lieutenant General, four stars for a General. The only five star that exists in the military is held by the Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces of the Republic of Kenya. This is the progression in terms of military ranks in the country. And it is this position of General who then becomes CDF, Chief of Defense Forces of the country that we are talking about today and just trying to focus on, okay? So this is what we're going to be discussing with my guest tonight to get proper and full understanding of just how the military works and indeed this position. Um, before we get into all of your questions, by the way, which you have started sending, uh, my guest here with me, Brigadier Retired Ahmed Mohammed, who is a senior advisor at the Horn International Institute for Strategic Studies. Thank you still for being with us. Um, before we get into that position, you know, I'd like to hear your reflections. Um, on the life and times of General Ogola. Thank you very much, um, Yvonne. And uh, once again, allow me to send my condolences to the family of uh, General Ogola and, of course, all those um, officers and men uh, who lost their lives in the last uh, air crash. The general was a great officer, a great man. Mm -hmm. The general was a great officer, yeah. a great man, humble and down to earth. And I know we have covered uh, in some way, very quickly, uh, his life in terms of uh, what he went through. But I feel that the finer details mm. have not been captured. To make it a better understanding of how he rose through the 11 ranks as a cadet until he made it to the apex, the four-star general. Mm -hmm. And we'll pick this from the start, yeah. way back in 1984. As a young officer, as a young, uh, officer, as a young man, he joined as a cadet mm -hmm. in 1984 and went through the rigorous 11 month training. At the end of it all, 1985, he graduated. But I should mention also that in his career, the general excelled in almost all the ranks that he has been able. In fact, his success all through has been based on merit. Yeah. As a cadet, after 11 months, he was the best cadet all round. And in fact, he commanded that parade at the end of it all, done by only one person out of 65. And that was the start of this great career. From there, he was moved on because he was in the Kenya, Kenya Air Force. He went to Moya Base as a pilot trainee. And about 20 of them were in class in what we call the flight training school to be pilots to fly the different aircraft that were available in the Air Force. Again, out of the 20, the general stood out. He stood out. And out of that 20, he was picked to undertake further training in the US after only two or three months. Alone, a star, an outstanding person. He went to the US to the undergraduate pilot training school. And there again, he excelled. I'm sure we have seen on social media him dressing, ready for combat in that gear and doing very well. He came back the following year, 1986, having done very well as a pilot in, uh, in the US. Uh, coming back home again, he went through Moya Base, mm -hmm. and being a fighter pilot, he ended up in Lekipia Air Base in Nanyuki as a second lieutenant. Second lieutenant, the first rank that he held after cadet. Mm -hmm. and he became a fighter pilot. 
one of the very best that we are very proud of at that time. After a year, he made his rank to, a year, two years after he made his rank to full lieutenant, and he went for one more course. Now, if you have so many pilots, we require people to train others. He went for an instructor pilot course to train others in flying, again, where he did uh, very well. And after he came out, he went back to his base in Nanyuki as a, a fighter a pilot. Then about um, some point along the line, mm -hmm. he became, went back to school to be a chief instructor in the flight training school in Amway Air Base, where again he did uh, excel, in fact in charge of uh, coordinating those trainings for the uh, uh, trainers who were there, a job he did very well between 2000 and 2003. But just before that, I should mention that he had done his best to us outside the country. Yeah. And I'm so happy I was with him. We served together mm -hmm. in 1992 as military observers in the former Yugoslavia. Ten of us were sent there. Ten of us. Three of them were captains. He was one of them. Yeah. The remaining seven were majors on international assignment. Now, I should say this very proudly. This was an international assignment where you evaluated them the, the package by international staff. And the gradings normally are, after your tour, outstanding, above average, average, and then, of course, what goes below there. Out of 10 of us, he was a captain. I was a major. Seven of us were majors. General Gola was the only one graded outstanding. Outstanding. Again, reflecting on the abilities of this great general. He beat even us uh, majors yeah. in that. And that, again, was trying to show the profess, what he stood for, yeah. his seriousness Excellent. and commitment in his duties. And he came back, back home. When he came back, he served shortly again as chief instructor. They went on to be a pressure officer in uh, 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 Moya Base. But before that again, one more tour. Again, st standing out, he was picked again to go for his staff college in Ecole Militaire de Paris, mm -hmm. in the military staff college in Paris. A prestige for a few, and I'm sure out of that, if we knew, at the end of it all, he learned his French. He could speak it very well yeah. after he came back. On well, coming back then, uh, he um, became a precious officer in uh, Moy Air Base. And then shortly after, he went back to Lakeipia Air Base. Now, one thing we take pride of in the armed forces when you're serving, the position we take pride in is being in command. Everybody fights to be in command. Mm -hmm. I want to be a commander at every level, from the top of the to the top. And we aspire for that. Mm -hmm. Anything else is just secondary. Okay. The other point also is, and this is much more in foreign militaries, more so in the UK and the US. If you are so good, like the Rogola, we fast track you. You don't go at the normal pace like others. Uh -huh. You skip not put ranks, yeah. but you move faster okay. into those ranks. Uh -huh. And he did that. Uh -huh. So in um, 2007, he went back to Lakeipia Air Base, this time to be the commanding officer of the tactical fighter wing. The tactical fighter wing is a fighter wing in Lakeipia Air Base, and he was a commanding officer of that, a pride for any officer in the Air Force who flies the fighter aircraft. Only a few will do that. Anyone, at one time, only one person will be assigned that role. General Gola did that for two years, 0607. Uh, uh, um, uh, of course, out of that wonderful job, more follows. And the next rank after that was Kano. Yeah. And he came the following year, and again in command, he became the commander of a very prestigious command, like Kipia Air Base, the home of the fighter uh, 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 squadron. He commanded that base as a full Kano. And I used to see him again yeah. in that rank, good enough, yeah. he used to fly. He never left that. General Gola, even as commander. Even as commander. For, was flying. Right. You know, he could leave his... his, his, his and he didn't have to, right? He didn't have to. Yes, he but he liked it. He loved it. Okay. That was part of him. Right. In that smile of his, jumping in the, in, the, in the fly suit, and you see him out there, doing it so well, so proudly, and indeed, 
of motivation for all his officers and men. And he took pride in that. So best commander, the like KPIB is. Yeah. Around the same time is when we were moving into Somalia. And indeed, he was key in our oppressions in Somalia. He was key ensuring we have that air cover from our fighter aircrafts in the oppressions in Somalia. He did so well that he didn't last there. 2012, after things had a bit uh, almost like uh, cool down, he ticked his neck trunk. What was it? One star general, mm -hmm. brigadier, mm -hmm. and he became the deputy air force commander. Again, look at this. Every step is command, command. command. Yeah. What more can you ask for? Right. Nothing. And thus, the best is reserved for the best who can do that. He became deputy air force commander in 2012. And for six years, he served as deputy air force commander. And in 2018, having served so well, it was time for him to take full command of the Kenya Air Force. Air force. And he did that in 2018. Yeah. Again, a very proud general, fully in charge, still flying even in, the, uh, in, in, in that even environment. Then. Even in that environment, still <laughs> flying. And pushing and motivating his officers and the men. You see him in, 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 in Moebes, you see him in Mbakasi, you see him in Wajia, so proud, always smiling, mm. jovial, humble, and down to earth. And that's what the qualities we seek in any commander. Yeah. That you're humble and down to earth in terms of your men. Of course, he finished that in 2018 as um, uh, um, Commander Kenya Air Force. And in 2021, among the many generals who are there, the Sun generals, uh, uh, major generals, Sun generals, he was handpicked to be the vice chief of defense staff. Again, command. What everybody in the Armed Forces will aspire Aspires for. To. And at that point, only one was remaining. Only one was remaining. And of course, we all know yeah. that that one came last year. Mm. When he became the chief of defense staff. Despite all the odds yeah. and all the issues that came up still, for a professional officer who stands out, for a career officer who stands out, for a general so humble. In fact, with all the issues around there, the commander in chief felt that this was the right man to take the command of the Kenya Defense Forces. And that's what he did, at, all, at the end of it all, after 11 years, uh, I mean, passing 11 ranks. Yeah. Uh, at that point. And so there's a question uh, from somebody on, on Twitter, uh, and, and I'll get that in a moment, who asks, is it possible to skip um, these ranks? And you've just shown us that what happens is you can fast track through them, but you cannot move from one and skip three ranks to move higher. As far as we are concerned today, mm -hmm. in the Kenya Defense Forces, there's no room to skip any rank. Okay, you may have to serve a shorter time yeah. in that position, right. but no skip. Remember, at the end of it all, you must be professional and feel every appointment, every rank, what it entails yeah. in developing you for higher assignments. For higher assignments. Yes. Um, and, and so that ranking is there. So he started off, and just like you said, second lieutenant, two lieutenant, two captain, major, lieutenant colonel, colonel, brigadier, Major General, Lieutenant General, and it was actually uh, last year uh, that uh, the President, who is the Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces, then promoted him from Lieutenant General to General, being a four-star general, and therefore ready to assume the office exactly. of the Chief of Defense Forces. Exactly. So he went up the ranks through all of this to become that. And, and, and you've shown us, you know, excellence at literally every of these levels. But I want us to take a step back uh, for a minute, uh, Brigadier, and, and let's talk about, um, you know, this office of the head of the military. It has evolved and, and morphed quite a bit uh, since colonial times to present day. Um, what can you tell us about the evolution of this, including at some point, we didn't always call this position CDF. We called it CGS at some point. But, but take us through the progression um, and the history of this one. Thank you, Yvonne. I must start by saying that um, at independence and, and after that, the Kenya Defense Forces 
has remained a very professional force, and one that anybody, any member, will be very proud of. And in terms of the history, we go back to um, just after independence, or just before independence, where we were mainly uh, um, the Kenya, um, um, the Kenya Rifles, mm -hmm. and uh, the King's African Rifles, sorry. That's what we were, with um, uh, three and five um, uh, infantry battalions in, uh, in the lead. Then, when we got independence in 1963, we remained partly so until uh, 1966, when we were able now to really be stable uh, as um, the Kenya Armed Forces, and were able, therefore, at that point, to have our first uh, the chief of, uh, of defense uh, staff. At that point, it was indeed um, a general from the UK, uh, because we didn't have enough of us in, at that point yeah. to rise those positions uh, at that time. So we therefore had the first commander of the um, uh, Kenya Armed Forces coming in as a British general, by General Bernard uh, Penfold, who served from 1966 until 1969. And in 1969, therefore, we were now strong enough and ready to have our own mm -hmm. take charge of the uh, Kenya Armed Forces. At that point, the Army was large, but the Air Force and Navy were very small. In fact, uh, the Air Force was very small indeed, and the Navy was small also. The Army was actually in charge and taking uh, the lead in this regard. In 1969, uh, General uh, Joseph Ndolo was appointed the uh, Chief of Defense Staff uh, at the rank of Major General. And uh, uh, he held this uh, rank um, for two years, until 1971, when we had the first challenge, and we had an um, uh, attempt of a coup in this country. Uh, which was quite uh, early enough and quite uh, challenging and, uh, you know, for the young uh, Kenya armed forces. Um, and at that point, you know, he still was the um, chief of defense staff of all the services. Mm -hmm. So in 71, this happened. And uh, normally this is a very serious action from members of the armed forces. And normally when you go through that, you'll face court martial and all that, you know, which is very serious. Yeah. Um, and President Kenyatta, who was the commander in chief, therefore opted to have uh, General Andolo retired. And that's when, therefore, in 1971, when General Mulenge took over as Chief of Defense Staff. But something unique happened. From advice from his staff at that time, the Commander in Chief was informed that the CDF, Chief of Defense Staff, commanding all the three services, was very strong and powerful. And with that, he can actually cause chaos and lead to another coup. So at that point, the Commander in Chief, President Kenyatta, said that he'll remove the joint nature of the armed forces, mm -hmm. and all the three will be independent. Army, Air Force, Navy. And they all commanders report to him directly without going through somebody. What is he doing? Weakening them to avoid a very strong force and to avoid any future possible coup. Uh -huh. So that went on. General 71, General Mulinga took over yeah. as commander of uh, the army and uh, the air force. He didn't command the air force and, and the, navy. the navy until, okay. until um, 1978. 1978, when there was a change again, and in fact, at that point, uh, General Mulinga became a four star, the first four star mm. in the Kenya Armed Forces. And he was given back all the services. Okay. He was given back the Army, the Air Force, and the Navy uh -huh. as Chief of Defense. Uh, in fact, the name changed at that point uh -huh. from Chief of Defense Staff uh -huh. to Chief of General Staff. Uh -huh. And Mulinge was the first Chief of General Staff in 1978. And I should mention that uh, uh, um, at that point, in fact, the following year, we see a situation where uh, the three services were all now all very strong. The army was very strong also, and the army got, uh, 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 the following year, General Sawe as the commander of the uh, uh, Kenya army. Uh, you know. And indeed, also after a year, the first deputy CGS was General Sawe. He was army commander 
and, and also the deputy, deputy CJ, the first one, uh -huh. all through. Uh, now, after that, we skip to the events of 1982, mm -hmm. which we all recall. Another very sad incident indeed. Yeah? Uh, 1971? 1982. 1982. Yeah. The coup coming in from uh, uh, our members of the armed forces led by uh, the, junior, the junior ranks. And that coup was actually um, uh, overcome by the efforts of General Mohammed, mm -hmm. who was then Deputy Army Commander and the Major General. And uh, following that action, after the coup, the army was again, the, it was reformed uh, in a way so that, in fact, the um, Air Force so a major review in their ranks and all that and the way they do, they do yes, things. Right. And after the coup, General Mahmoud was promoted to lieutenant general uh -huh. and appointed Air Force commander. Okay. The first time we had a three-star as Air Force commander. In the army, we had lieutenant general uh, Sawe, mm -hmm. who remained army commander and deputy the, CGS. Okay. That went on until 1986. 1986 was the time for General Ndolo, General Mulenge, to take his retirement. Mm -hmm. After 15 years at the top. That's a long time. That's a long time. We're and not we, used to that these days. we'll come to that. We'll yeah. come to issues around that right. as you go along. Yeah. 1986, therefore, yeah. uh, General Mulenge was to leave. And this is very important in uh -huh. terms of succession as we are discussing today. Yeah. Now, his deputy was General Malansawi. Yes. And I want to make it very clear that from this early point that the appointment, the chief of defense staff, chief of general staff, is at the pleasure of the president and commander in chief. Uh -huh. At this point, President Moi had two candidates who were in the rank of the Sergeant General, mm -hmm. both service commanders, uh, General Mahmoud in the Air Force mm -hmm. and General uh, Sawe in the Army. Yeah. And out of his wisdom, General, uh, the President mm -hmm. felt that the person to be CDF was going to be General Mahmoud. In 1986, he became first Sergeant General and appointed CDF. So he skipped. No, he didn't skip. Others. No, okay. he, was, he was in the Air Force, Lieutenant General. Yes. We had two of them, the Army so Commander, we, okay. both at the same rank. Right. So he had an option to pick either of them. Uh huh. And he chose to go for the Air Force. Okay. And at that point, again, very much in line with what one would expect, you know, when you pick a junior yeah. to come and uh, uh, um, succeed you, it's just fair that the junior, the senior, gives way. Right. So to allow for full command of the new general coming in, and a comfort for him, because he'll have, a, he'll have an issue looking at this chap down here. Yes. So it's very common in the armed forces that that happens. So General Sawe had to give way. Was this the first time we saw somebody from the Air Force now the taking first time, full control the first time of, of, of the, the defense, defense forces? forces yes. okay. So General uh, Sawe, yeah. appointed ambassador uh -huh. to Israel okay. around the same time, and the new army commander was Lieutenant General Lengues, who was promoted, uh -huh. who was before that, Deputy Army Commander. Okay. So, and in the Air Force, they lost their three star. Mm -hmm. The rank went back to Major General. Yes. Not the Sergeant General, which was the case before. Mm -hmm. uh, so, here was General Mahmoud as a, a, a CGS, mm -hmm. Chief of General Staff, uh, just came in with, uh, with uh, um, one Lieutenant General and, uh, and uh, Two major generals in the army mm -hmm. and in the in the uh, sorry in the air force and in the in the navy. Now, for some reasons, General Mahmoud has had no deputy CGS. He didn't have. Okay. He was and the, deputy, the, the army commander this time was not army commander and deputy CGS. So he served without a a deputy a deputy yes. CGS. Yes, he did that. And was this procedural or? Well, what is the problem? Okay. If I'm comfortable, I'm in the charge and uh, just leading around for a while, it's not an issue. Okay. Yeah, when the time comes, then you're going to do it. And um, 
1993, mm -hmm. 92 rather, 92, General Lenges retired. And the next army commander appointed was Lieutenant General Tonje. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now we're getting. <laughs> <laughs> now we're in. getting. <laughs> Get me closer. Yes. Tonje was the deputy army commander. Was uh -huh. the army commander, but still not deputy CGS. Yes. She was army commander in 1992, 1993, just early there. Mm -hmm. But for some reasons, in 1993, General. Actually, in 1992, General Mahmoud felt that now he, he needs required a deputy. a deputy. Okay. And therefore, in 1992, he appointed the army commander, the third General Tonje, to be deputy CGS. And in the army, we saw third General Cheriot coming in as army commander. Uh -huh. So so far, we have seen two deputy CGSs. Yes. But the first one didn't rise to be CDF. Right. And this was set a scene right. for what we are going through That now. would be Sawe, who was then sent away to Israel. Exactly, after, exactly, okay. exactly. And then now we... So, so this went on. This right. went on, therefore, with Tonje as a deputy, until 1996, when General Mahmoud had to retire after 10 years in service. General Mulinge had 15 years. General Mahmoud had, had 10, 10 years. Yeah. And I'm sure there's an issue about that. Yes, yes. You know, that this is too long. <laughs> yeah. You know, it becomes like, you know, it's too long. Because we're know? not used to you, it now with, yes, with what we exactly. see. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it becomes routines for you. Right. You know, even in terms of being about good change. Yeah. You can't really, you can't really impact that good change. Mm -hmm. So, 96, General Mahmoud had to leave. Now, at this point, we had only two lieutenant generals. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant General Tonje, deputy CGS, mm -hmm. and Lieutenant General uh, Agustino Cheriot as army commander. There's one thing we normally say, again, which will apply in this situation that we are going through. We have a term we use that when you are a deputy, when you are a second in command, when you are a vice, mm -hmm. you are actually a commander in wait. And it's a very tricky position to serve as a deputy, a second in command, a vice. Because the commander is looking at you and you are starting for that position. Yeah. You have to be very humble. You have to be very understanding. You have to be very careful in how you do things and don't so attempt at any one time to outshine, outshine your boss. Your boss. Okay. Because any time can get rid of you. Because you are Next in line. Next in line. And we're almost assured, but serve him well, with caution and the best of your ability. Yeah. So, 1996, um, the president was President Moy. Mm -hmm. The president commander in chief was President Moy. And I remember it was in December 1996 um, that General, uh, uh, President Moy, appointed General Tonje mm -hmm. as the chief of general staff. Finally, and four-star general. Yeah. Um, and that was the start of even some funny things happening again, you know, uh, in that General um, Tonje, a very professional officer, mm -hmm. another outstanding officer who stood for what is right, mm -hmm. who was very professional, who believed in the high standards of training, who believed in discipline, and who believed in the performance of duty. In fact, he brought in so many things yeah. to transform the Kenya armed forces. And, and we'll, we'll come to that. Yeah, and we'll come back, because yes. the Tonja rules are so we'll significant that. in terms yes. of we'll, succession. We'll come to that, yeah. but he stood for the best. Yeah. In fact, I'm so happy that when he came in, I was his first military assistant. And sitting by his door and seeing things happening, that changed me. How I do things, from then on, I changed. A professional, a trainer, yeah. a commander. Strict, but for a reason. Okay. So here we are. Yeah. 
1996, he came in and he got his first deputy, Lieutenant General Munyao. He became his deputy. Mm -hmm. Munyao was actually due for retirement after a year or two, and he left. And after that, General Pande came in yes. as, the, um, uh, as the vice chief of, uh, of general staff. So fast forward. Of course, we know the Tonja rules. Yes. I can go through it if need be now, but we'll, 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 we'll just, come back just to that. Just that for a minute, because there's also lots of questions about the Tonja yes. rules and whether they're legally binding or you know, somewhere in the military Good. book. We'll get to that. But, but the key yeah. one, the key one, it, I can't it, leave, leave, let it go now. Yes. And only a professional can do this. Uh -huh. A man who believes in institutions, who believes in values, who believes in ideals, was the fact that he said, a CGS must live after four years. And this was based on two issues. He said, General Mahmoud is after 10 years. Yeah. General Mulinga, 15 years. Unacceptable in my term. And he said, I am the CGS and I'm prepared to live after four years. Okay. And he did exa live exactly after four years in the year 2000. We'll come back to the rules and all, how they apply. Yes. 2000, then we we'll fast forward and the next CDF. It again have, tricky, again tricky. Yeah, let's talk about <laughs> this one, because... <laughs> again tricky. It would have been Wait. Pande, right? Now, interesting. I mean, he was next in line. Very, very interesting. CGS in waiting. Very interesting. Yeah. That General Pande is another very good mentor, an outstanding officer mm -hmm. who has served this country on the threshold scene mm -hmm. and made a name for us. He served in Namibia as brigadier, yeah. as deputy force commander. Yeah. He served in Mozambique. He served in Sierra, Sierra Leone, Leone as force commander. Outstanding. Mm. He went to Liberia. Yeah. Outstanding. I remember, in both Namibia and Sierra Leone and Liberia, yeah. he received the highest honors, a general to be respected. Mm. Now, in that year, 2000, the UN came knocking. When in Sierra Leone, the Indian general failed. And in fact, we Kenyans lost a number of soldiers. Mm. And they said they want a commander to take over. And they asked Kenya, give us somebody. And they handpicked General Pandey. And General Tonje said, my deputy, outstanding, if the world wants him, who am I to hold on to him? And they gave him away to the Sierra Leone as first commander. And um, so, so, question here. Yes. Opande was obviously next in line. He was. Wouldn't he want him and say, okay, no, 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 this is my next in, 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 in waiting, let him take over uh, per the Tonja rules that uh, by now he had already set and send somebody else instead? General Tonje believed that if somebody is required and is very good, he let him go. Okay. But even me, he listened to me after about four months when I was, the staff college said, we want this, uh, uh, I was at uh, and he let me go yeah. to staff college, right. be an instructor because he believed in the best, going to the best place. He said, I'll let him go. Okay. And that really tells you that you don't hang on to people. If they're very good, I'm going to do better. If they're quite, now remember, in this, in this case, it's not Kenya asking for him, the international community. They okay. said, we want a general in Sierra Leone. So this happens at the time when Tonje is set to retire after four years. In fact, two uh, years, at the two helm. years. Yeah, yeah, he had yes. done two years. He had two years to go. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, so then that happens, and then what happens now when Tonje retires after now, his four years? Tonje had a gap again. He didn't fill the post of um, Chief of General Staff. Mm -hmm. he remained vacant for another almost a year or two until his departure in 2000. Yeah. And let's recall, because this will come again as we go along. Mm -hmm. Before General Tonje, the CDF, was General Mahmoud, yeah. who was all along army but uh, seconded to the Air Force and came as Air Force. Uh -huh. Then comes General Tonje from the army. Yes. And then after that now, we have General Kibwana coming in. Yes, in the year from the Navy. Yeah. yeah. Partly borrowing on what you may call, you may call the Tonje rules yeah. in terms of, uh, the, the, we'll still come back to that yeah. at some point. Okay. Kibwana came in in 2000. Right. And, uh, and uh, his deputy was General Quesh initially, mm -hmm. and later General Leshan, who came in as, a, as vice chief of uh, general staff. Now, surprisingly, surprisingly, after the elections of 2002, uh, a year later, uh, General Quesh didn't last as VCDF. He was replaced and posted uh, to different assignment. General Leshan came in as, um, as vice chief of general staff. Yeah. Then, at the four-year point, interestingly, General Kibwana did not leave at the four-year point. He took on one more year. 
because the instruction says four years or one other year at the pleasure of the commander in chief. Okay. So it took one more year. And his time came in 2005 when he had to leave. Yeah. Now, around the same time, General Leshan, who was his deputy, his time had come. And he left slightly, just around the same time. And again, to reemphasize the fact that. So in 2005, you've got um, the CGS and the deputy leaving at the same time? Uh, yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. And again, to reemphasize. That's two gaps. Yes, two gaps. And Left. Then, and then to reemphasize. Yes. That despite the 20 rules, yeah. the commander in chief has the prerogative mm. to fit in whoever he wants. Okay. So, um, Brigadier, I want us to uh, rush this history lesson just a little bit so we can get to present day. Because yes. I want us to run one more story and then get into now the questions that people yes. have. Yes. So, um, at this point, we've got a CGS and his deputy both leaving at the same time. Yes. Um, big gap, big void, big vacuum in two important officers in the military? Now, remember, when you talk of big gap, those 11 positions you mentioned, yeah. we have, at that point, we had another two lieutenant generals, one in the army and one in the uh, 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 war college, who were there. Any of them will fill in because they've had experience, they've had command experience, and they're good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so long as you have a general and you've had your command, yeah. command experience, you're good to go. The so you have to have had command experience? That is very ideal. In okay. fact, to be... To hold that senior appointment. Right. In fact, I should mention, I tell you one time, and this is for the Defense Council and the Commander-in-Chief. In terms of that senior appointment, mm -hmm certain things stand out, and they will discuss that and look at it. Okay. One is the competence. Are you able to take on this position effectively? Number two is that capability. You have the strength, agile, you're agile, and you're strong enough to take this on. Mm -hmm. Number three, ideally, you must have had a command experience at the lower level, preferably what we call uh, um, a, 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 a brigade command. Now we have general officer commanding, uh, you know, service command. You know, so that at that point, when you go into the four star post, you are actually ready and good to go. And finally, mm -hmm. you must be very professional in terms of undertaking your activity, understanding your activities as uh, a general. Industrial. So, the issue of a gap, whoever are below there are good to go and ready to fill in that okay. position. So, who fills in after Kibwana? So, in 2005, yeah. the um, uh, President, President Kibaki, mm -hmm. at that time now, chose to go for the Army Commander mm -hmm. as the Chief of Defense Staff and General uh, Karangi yes. as his vice. Yeah. Yeah. Then General Karangi came in, mm -hmm. uh, General, General, General um, Kianga came in. Kianga again finishes four year term, and again we said, at the pleasure of the commander in chief. Right. He got two more years with the, uh, Karangi uh, as his deputy. And they moved on until 2011, when oh, no. for the second time, yeah. second time, we see the vice chief taking over from the CGS. Uh -huh. This is General Karangi now taking over from, from General his, Kianga. Right. The first one was General Tonje taking over from, from General Mahamu. Mm -hmm. You know, again, you can see some precedents here yes. that the immediate uh, the vice Takes is over. the one who will uh, take over. And Karangi also had his unique aspects and what he brought on board. The first thing that he brings on board is the change of title from Chief of General Staff mm -hmm. to Chief of Defense Staff. That came first with General... So from CGS uh, to CDF? CDF, yes. Okay. The first to, uh, to and hold what the post. informed this change? Now, uh, one at that time was we are going through a transformation. Yes. And partly this came from General Tonje also. Yeah. And he built in on this. And again, don't forget, we are building our traditions from the UK Defence Forces, yeah. who all along, along the way, also changed to Chief of Defence Staff and also uh, 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 did that. And also we found appropriate, you know, at that time, we asked from General Tonje to make a Chief of Ge Defence Staff. And General, um, uh, when General Karangi took over, who came in as his uh, deputy? General Mwadede, mm -hmm. was then serving as Navy Commander. Yes. The element of command I mentioned, 
as of command at that lower level to come in and fill this, uh, this uh, slot. Yeah, when they came in 22, uh, Karangi served for three years. Mm -hmm. Why? Not four years. Because the law said you'll serve for four years or, or attaining the attainment of the compulsory retirement age, age yes. whichever comes earlier. Yeah. And that came earlier. However, something else happened uh -huh. for some reasons. And the, year, the, the, the age of 62 for CDF was changed to 64 in Karangi's time. Yeah. So he did three years uh, to 64 and left at the three-year point. And therefore, in 2015, it was time to go. Now, very importantly, again, his vice chief, General Madade, took over. Again, setting up precedents uh -huh. in terms of how this will normally uh, get attained. And right. also building on, on the... Uh, issue of Navy, Army, Air Force, mm -hmm. Tonje, uh, Karangi, uh, Modede, yes. you know, which, which came in very well. Yeah. And Modede had two deputies. One was General Kasaon, who was Army commander, who came in as a deputy. Yeah. But then his time to leave came while Modede was on. Uh -huh. And he left to give way for General Kibochi, who uh -huh. was Army commander, and moved in to become and be the deputy v C C CDF, CDF for General uh, uh, Mwadede. So Kibo Mwadede did uh, four years, uh -huh. plus the one year. Again, at the pleasure, at the pleasure of, of the commander-in-chief. Commander in okay. It's time to go in 2020. Again, following presidents, the post just moved smoothly right. for General Kibochi to be the CDF. Yeah. And again, now starting the transition again. Mm. Army, Navy, Air Force, mm -hmm. starting again now. Yes. You know, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, trend. Now, Kibochi also did three years because the age caught up with him. Yeah. And he had to leave in 2023 after serving for uh, uh, three years. Now, for Kibochi, he had two deputies also. Yes. One was General Mugalu, who came in as left, uh, the vice chief of general staff, but at about a year or two, age caught up with him and he left. And then it was time now for this superb, outstanding, very humble general, General Gola, to fill in those shoes. Yeah. And that was uh, when he came in as uh, vice chief of defense staff. And he stayed on until 2023. Again, remember, uh, 2023 was time for change again mm -hmm. when General Kibochi was leaving. And so that's from the army now to the Air Force. The Air Force and General, okay. general Ogola uh, took over. All right. You know, as chief of defense. And there are two deputies. Yes. The first General Jonah Mwangi uh -huh. would come in earlier. But again, also about, after about a year, Edge caught up with him. Ah. And he left, and Lieutenant General Kariri came in a few months ago okay. as the Vice Chief of Defense Staff. Okay. And that's where we are today. That's where we are today. Yes. I want us to pause there for a minute because. Yo, today it's a history lesson. When I said it's the explainer, it, it doesn't get any better than this. We've tracked the history of uh, those at the helm of the military all the way from colonial times uh, in 1966 to present day. We will come back and talk about a few things. There's many questions about uh, the Tonja rules. We'll understand what they are exactly um, and plenty of other questions that our viewers have coming in already. Um, the hashtag to use is the explainer. I see your questions. Magari 